You do it all without breaking a sweat, and you do it all in style. From being a boss exec to the Tuesday yoga to the kids' homework, family dinners, lunches, brunches, trips to the vet, and a weekend getaway that's anything but a getaway. That's why Infinity fully reimagined the QX60 to help you conquer it all with ease. Even when you have back-to-back conference calls on top of kids' basketball practices, not to mention your side hustle. A luxury SUV as functional as it is stylish and as versatile as it is serene. Available features like seating for up to seven passengers, a suite of active safety features, and massaging front seats. Introducing the all-new Infiniti QX60, designed to help you conquer life in style. Legal. Now with extremely limited availability, contact your local retailer for inventory information. Hola, <laughs> welcome to episode 82 of Word to Your Mama. Word to Your Mama is a podcast about the life of a Latinx mama, that's me, and the lives of my amazing multicultural tribe, a celebration of shared experiences navigating this dynamic world. There will be special guests, mad laughs, and absolutely no BS. No BS. Nah, B is our motto. Segments by The Supernatural Bear, he's my little man, 9 going on 49, but other than that, this podcast will be explicit. Please believe it. Now, the level of explicitness, is that a word, will depend, you know, it'll, it'll vary, but it, yeah, just a little warning there. Today, we have Angie Fuentes, aka DJ Il Mecca. Now, she is a ball of positivity. She's Afro-Latina. When I was looking for dope Latina DJs in the LA area, I was, you know, I reached out to her. And so that's how I, I got to know her via, um, we talked a little bit, you know, via text and stuff. But to started following her and seeing her videos of her her spinning gigs and I was like man I was like she looks like so much fun like I want her to DJ all the stuff I want to go and dance and see because she looks like she's having so much fun like we'll have links to all that stuff and I said if you listen to uh, a previous guest we had Spinurita on here I was like yeah that that's like same energy same energy of like Someone just having a grip of fun and it permeates the entire room so much so that it translates um, through video and social media. So I was super excited to have her on and and have a discussion, you know, um, being Afro-Latina, being um, Mexican and and black growing up in L.A., you'll hear her story. And also it's great that she seemed, you know, really well supported by both sides of her families, which created, I think, helped to create this um, this great sense of self um, because it could have gone the other way. But it because, you know, it west coast la we're not you know we're not rolling in in afro latinos so i think it was great to get to to the root of that and also when she decided to go into djing um her a car accident that taught her patience um and how when she decided to go full-blown into dj she went to the right place she went to the famous beat junkies institute of sound and we talk about so much more as always, uh, after that segment, her segment, we'll have the Supernatural Bear Corner. We'll see what he comes up with. And then after that, we'll have the outro. So, yeah, Ilmeca, ball of energy. I love her so much. I cannot wait to dance uh, while she's spinning live. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. We're still in the pandemic, kids. So, yeah, let's get into this. Super good. Like, I've never seen anything like that at Ross. 
Thank like, you. I know I have another one in my um, DJ room that's really cool too. It's like channeling, like folklorico vibes. Mm -hmm. It's really cute. So I, and I found it at a Ross too. Come on, you got the the Ross luck. Right? I, <laughs> and I never look. I'm just like, mm, mira, a ver que <laughs> And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, go. Finds, <laughs> treasures. Um, okay, so so let's start off with uh, how are you doing, Full first and foremost? how You told us about Wednesday, but how are you doing overall? overall? Because, you know, contrary to proper leaf, it's still a pandemic. Uh, oh. <laughs> so how are we doing? You know... <laughs> It's definitely been the wildest, I want to say, two and a half years of my life. One and a half for sure. I feel like the beginning of the pandemic wasn't as bad. Like, it was like, okay, you know, you're testing the waters, you don't know what it is, you're just kind of <laughs> like, all right. But for sure, the last year and a half has tested my patience mm. in a way that I've never had them tested before. But it's crazy because I'm one of those people who always likes to just um, like work on self and, and just kind of self-improve and check in and just, you know, I always want to be a better version of myself. Right. And one of the things in like my prayer and meditation that I've always asked God is to help me with my patience. Mm. And let me tell you, honey. <laughs> When you ask for something, I draw my hair When you ask for something, you will get it. And you have to be really careful about the things that you ask for because it definitely, it definitely, in a whole lot of different ways to like work, family, creativity, um, just everything. But I feel like I'm definitely, I've, I'm over the hill, right? I nice. feel like I'm over the hill. Can you see that? Um, is... Gracias. <laughs> and I honestly feel like, even though I couldn't see it, obviously, at the time, it all makes sense. Yeah. Like, it all, it really mm -hmm. does. And it's so hard for us to accept that and understand it in the middle of everything that we're going through. But I can definitely see how it was supposed to really help me level up as a person, as mm -hmm. a sister friend, as a DJ, <laughs> as a, anything. Like, every everything. aspect of my life, I feel like it really helped me just look at everything full circle and really just look inside and say okay what are you doing you know and and like i'm really looking inside to better find my purpose mm -hmm. and i think it, even though you know it's, i don't ever feel like you arrive it's just a journey that's how i feel like yeah. you continue to grow and evolve but i definitely like where i am right now um so i feel good about it i can say that now that's great six months ago i don't know <laughs> You were in the trenches. You were, yeah, that that is so true. You can't you it's hard when you're in the middle of it, when you're in that moment, you know, and just like, why? Why why is all this? But then later you make it, you per persevere and you make it to the other side. And you're like, oh. Yeah. And oh. even no, it's it's really like that. And it's crazy because even um, the last thing, I feel like the last thing that took me over, that brought me over the hill, that was like, okay, then it started the dissension, right? <laughs> um, I was in a car accident oh. and like, I was on my way to work. I was literally like four minutes away from work. And I'm like, and me, obviously music lover, music curates <laughs> my whole life, right? Like mm -hmm. the soundtrack to everything. So I'm very much that person that I can't take off until I figure out what song I'm going to play. Like same, <laughs> same, same. I'm very much that person. And so I remember I was, I usually have a, I have a friend who lives across the country and he and I usually speak in the mornings, right? Just checking on each other. Um, and so as soon as we got off the phone, I was like, okay, no, I'm about to, I'm almost at work. I need something to give me a little boost, honey. <laughs> and I had just threw a track on it. I was like, oh, I was feeling good. Turned off of the main sheet. And I was like, okay, I was almost to work. I was good, honey. And this lady ran a stop sign. <gasps> T-boned me, oh. and when I tell you, I've never been in an accident like that, like super small fender benders, you know, like nothing, really nothing. But this thing right here, like she hit me, we were on a residential street on top of it. She, one, she didn't see the stop sign, obviously. 
I didn't have a stop sign, but she was going so fast. Um, she literally like, so I was going this way and then she hit me this way. The car ended up next to her. Oh, um, God. and luckily the house that was on the corner where I ended up in front of had um, a camera and was able to catch it, um, which helped me a lot with like my insurance. Cause she was fighting it. And I'm like, girl, and you it's crazy. Me. She even got out of the car. I was so frazzled. Right. She got out of the car. She's like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, yeah, this lady just, my car just ran the stop sign and hit me. And she's like, and I didn't know it was her. I was like, <laughs> I was like stop and hit me. I, I was just so frazzled. And she was like, wait, who? And she was like, wait, that was me. I was like, you ran a stop sign. <laughs> and so she was like, what? She literally said, what stop sign? Oh, no. And I literally was like, <laughs> that one. That. It was the wildest thing. And even just the whole pro. And I had just got a car in September, brand new car. <laughs> And so, and it wasn't even about that, but it was just like, I I, had, I was just in a good place, you know? And yeah. I was just like, okay. So then it was such a process with the insurance and the rental car. And just even now with the pandemic and just trying to get a new car again, I mean, it was harder then, but now it was like, no one has cars and trying to yeah. go through that. And I was just like, Jesus. <laughs> you know I mean? like, that's like, I'm just like, I couldn't, it really, that really just like that. It was a month and a half of just going through all of that and like going to therapy and stuff for my back. And it was just like, you know what, at that point, I think I really understood fully on a different level that when things are outside of your control, it doesn't even like stressing about it does nothing being mad honey does nothing like just drink some water eat some fruit and mind your business and put some some music on and just dance to the next event because you just never like you have no control over those things you know so it really taught me that and i think um like I said, definitely in the middle of it, I was just so frustrated. Everyone around me saw it. And, but I think I really, really, really understood on a whole different level. I think how, um, just random life can be and how you, you can really feel like you're on top of the world. And then the next <laughs> thing you're, oh, you're like, on the curb with no shoes on, <laughs> like, on I mean, I have to, you know, but you're just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, like, you know, you're just like, Huh? Like you <laughs> totally like what? Like I was just going to work, you know, and it's just like it, it just really taught me to just appreciate every day, every moment, and just be grateful and just really but on another level. I feel like I've yeah. always had that, but just on a on a really larger scale. And it's something that I carry with me. Even like this morning within the midst of all the craziness I was dealing with, it's like <laughs> you do. What can you do? <laughs> So how's your back now? I'm I'm doing a lot better. I'm still going to therapy. I actually just had an MRI like a week ago. So it's still a work in progress, but it's definitely not where I was when I had the accident. So I'm grateful for that. Um, I'm doing a lot better, um, which, which actually was so... One of the things, too, that I think hurt me the most, not just physically, but mentally, is like, you know, I with DJing, I have to stand up. Yeah. And... I would literally just power through and I'd be, sometimes I'd be DJing and I'd be in so much pain, but I would push through because it actually brought me so much joy. It made me, it brought me like a sense of normalcy and it just, it brought me back to the things that I enjoy. And like, it helped me just even be in like a little incubator, for like, even if it's an hour or two hours or however long my set was. Um, and then afterwards I just, Okay, I gotta go lay down now. Like, you know, that was it. But I'm definitely better. Thank you for asking. No, yeah. that's good. Well, I'm glad to hear. And I'm glad to hear lessons learned. Like someone could have someone else could have been in that same accident and just been pissed at the world and and nothing would have come out of it. And it just would have been even a, a worse downhill spiral. So downward yeah. spiral. So that's I'm glad that you know. Your outlook is is what I predicted that, you know, you you stay positive in even in the, the messiest of times. Um, so I wanted to kind of touch on where were you born and raised? So I was born and raised here in Los Angeles. Um, 
I grew up actually in the area that I still live in. Um, I didn't always live here. So after I graduated high school, I went to Dorsey High. Um, so I ended up moving to Downey, which is where a lot of my family stays. Um, and I lived in Paramount for a while, but pretty much like mid city South LA is where I grew up mm -hmm. and where I've pretty much just been for the, for the majority of my life. Um, and I'm such a little LA baby for sure. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I'm, I'm LA to the death for sure. And and I wanted to also it was I thought it was very important too to really touch upon for personal reasons because my you know our son my son the supernatural pair he's he's mixed and he's he's uh you know he when I was telling him about who was going to be on and I was telling him about it he's like oh he. She's like me. He's like, without the Korean. And I was like, yeah, without the Korean, but, you know, black Mexican. You know, how is it, you know, growing up in San Diego, but being super into hip hop and like dreaming of moving to New York and being, it was, you know, Gen X during that time. I was no only because of, I think because of hip hop, I was knowing about Afro Latinos. We didn't have them here really you know so yeah. i wanted to see how unique you know was that growing up being afro latina in south la at that time so i basically grew not to date myself because you know we don't like to do that honey but i'm good <laughs> <laughs> um so i basically you know it was like the early 90s right um it was it was a really interesting time i think it was interesting because so I grew up, my mother is, is Mexican, my, my dad is black, um, and I pretty much grew up with my mom's family. Um, and my mom, she was born in Mexico. Her family immigrated here when she was like six. Um, mm -hmm. I have a really large family, typical, traditional <laughs> Mexican family, let me say. Uh, and so it was really interesting because I grew up in, you know, South LA, and so... I think it was like the best of both worlds because like at that time, my family, my mom's family lived in like Huntington Park and Gage, you know? Um, and so, um, sorry, my AirPods never stay in Huntington. Mine Leaf. either. My, I think I have small holes. Do we have small I think holes? I think, honey, look, I think we just, <laughs> I don't know how people run in them and do exactly. all this stuff. Exactly. I look. <laughs> It ain't for me. Give me some, give me some over the ears all, right. Right? all day. Time, right. And I should have did that and I didn't, but whatever. It's my bad. But, um, but yeah, I think I got the best of both worlds because I went to school and it was like predominantly African American. We did have Latinos obviously, but, um, I got to really experience both sides. Um, cause when I'd go to like my family's house, it was like, my family was very much, no me hables en inglés porque yo no entiendo. You know, and and yeah. I learned actually learned Spanish. That was my first language, um, and then I started to learn English in school. My mom speaks English, but it was like they always wanted me to make they always wanted to make sure I learned and I knew Spanish, um, and so it was literally just that immersed in that way on, on the weekends. And because like my grandparents have like eleven kids, I have like a thousand cousins. So every weekend there's a party, there's a birthday, there's like a casada. <laughs> There's a just it's Saturday, so we want a carne asada, we want tacos. It's like it was like it was always experiencing both. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. Um, also, growing up in this area, so I didn't really run into or see a lot of myself like Afro Latinos just around. But I think the really cool thing was that I grew up with a lot of Belizeans and Caribbean people. Please, oh, yeah, so, I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, and that was the connection for me. It was just yeah. like me. So, like, I, like, a lot of my early childhood friends, my best friend growing up, and even just, like, my first, like, real, real boyfriend, he was Belizean, and it was just kind of like, wait, like, wait, what? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. And it was just like, me, like wait, so where's the lead? Wait, and what? And why y'all? And why do y'all make tamales? And like, we make tamales, but like, but why your tamales bigger than ours? And why do you wrap them different? And it's like, like it was girl here go to airport again. And so, <laughs> um, it small was like holes, that type of thing. But it was like I was so drawn mm. in. Like, so there's people that look like me whose hair texture is similar. You know, all these different things. Um, and I think that totally. Ch 
changed the experience for me where I felt a lot more comfortable um, because I feel like I always say like my regular just American friends, right? Like that don't have like roots anywhere outside of America. <laughs> um, like it was so different. My experience when I'd go like hang out with their families or be in their houses, I'd be like, oh, okay. Cause even like with the legions again, you know, they they listen to soca music. They're listening to things like that. I'm familiar with, like, you know, we listen to cumbias and we, again, there's music everywhere, the foundation, there's food. And I think it just really made me feel at home, um, in a totally different way. And even just part of that also is a really big reason why, I just really always play and love like reggae music and dance hall music because I really grew up with it. Yeah. Um, so, and it's like, I was like, I actually have like, uh, like families that are, that I grew up with that are Belizean. I'm like honorary Belizean. And so <laughs> it's just, it, it was really cool. It was really dope. I think it was really interesting, especially during like the riots and stuff like that. Mm. Um, when we had like all the race wars and all the different stuff going on, I think it was really weird for me processing all of that being like nine or 10 years old. Um, because obviously I don't understand. And, and mm. for me in my position, I'm like, well, what are you talking about? We're the same. Like, I look at me, I'm just one big person. Like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. just, I just never really could understand like the, the hatred that, you know, that I would see some sometimes in, in even if it was on the news or even just people like in the streets or something. And I'd be like, what? It was the craziest thing to me. Like, I just couldn't understand not liking someone because of what they look like or because of what they sounded like. Um, so that was, that was definitely, it was, it was a learning curve. I think, um, I think my family on both sides did really good at just teaching me how to love myself and, oh, um, and to just, so I never really felt like had like identity issues, I guess, like really, nice. I was comfortable, I think just with who I was, um, always. And I just knew like, I wasn't the, I don't even want to say the norm. Cause what is that? But yeah. you know, I knew that it was something that, you know, that doesn't happen that often, I guess. <laughs> um, Especially, I think for you know, like I said, my mom wasn't from here. She grew up here because she was sick, so she was basically went to school here. So you know, she definitely had a love of like again the culture, like and and like hip hop music, and even you know, just for her generation in the seventies and stuff, it was like um, she had her own experience, and it kind of trickled over. I think with me, um, and she was always one of those people who. Even like, cause we would get looks, right? Cause me and my mom, it's funny. Cause we actually look a lot alike. Mm -hmm. I'm just like the chocolate version of her with different <laughs> hair, right? She has curly hair too, but it's just like, it's just, you know, so it's funny. Cause people would always be like, oh, whose who's little girl is that? And she's like, it's mine. Like, <laughs> my daughter, what are you talking about? Right. Um, so, but it, it was just like, she never was like offended or offensive, but she, again, it was always like that. You're good. You're enough. You're, oh, you're beautiful. It was yeah. never, um, uh, like I said, on both sides, I never really felt out of place, I guess. Yeah. Which was dope. COVID-19 moves fast, and now you can too. If you feel symptoms, even if they're mild, you should test fast. Test positive and at high risk for severe COVID-19? Then act fast with authorized oral treatments that can be taken at home and must be taken within five days from when symptoms begin. COVID-19 moves fast, and now you can too by asking your healthcare provider if an oral treatment is right for you. Learn about a treatment option at TreatCV19.com. This message is sponsored by Pfizer. I think that that's amazing that you grew up in the area because when, uh, like, the last couple years before we boned out of L.A., we lived in close to that area in the Dons, and everybody I met, Belizean, and then... And then Rocket was, he's like, oh, yeah, no, this is like, you, because I, and then I started noticing when I was driving down, like, Crenshaw and Slauson, and I was like, that's Belizean, that's Belizean, that's Belizean. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, no, there's a grip of Belizeans here. So that's, it seemed like, like you said, it was, you had best of both worlds, and then you had, like, the extra, like, Belizean. It was like a represent, another type of represent, close representation. Yeah. That That's, that's like a, it seems like a gift, you know, and like, you're an honorary Belizean, and da, 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 like, that's, that's amazing. So, another question I wanted to find out is, what is your first music memory slash 
what was your root? Like, what was your root into being like, ah, uh, music's my shit. I'm going to be a DJ one day. Like, what was that memory? We all have a root of something that started it off, kicked it all off. Honestly, I don't even remember any point in my life when music wasn't at, like an anchor, right? So my grandfather, um, my mom's dad, he was a mariachi. So literally, honey, when I tell you, <laughs> these like I would literally on my birthday, las mañanitas, I would get phone calls. Music was the base to everything, mm. to everything. And even when I would go to my dad's family's house, it was the same thing. You know, my grandma would play her records and yeah. you know, we'd have the Stevie Wonder and the Al Green and they sit in the den and we talk and the records would be playing. So it's so funny that I feel like it kind of took me a while to even really see it. And I think part of that too, as a child of an, a family that immigrated here, they never want you to do like artsy stuff, right? They want to, <laughs> you know, you're going to be a doctor, or you're going to do all. So I was like, okay. So, you know, I'm thinking that this is what it is. So I struggled actually, um, I think for a while, just trying to figure out like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? But then music again was always the foundation, right? And so I found myself even growing up, you know, so intrigued and, and mesmerized by like music videos, right? Like young T raps and like <laughs> all of that, like the music videos. And then I always really liked dancing as well. So um, like just seeing that intertwined. And then I, it was like a thing where even growing up, once I started driving, like creating a musical experience for my friends, I was always the driver, right? So like, what are we listening to? And at that time you got CDs, right? They, my friend, whatever. So we flipping through, what are we playing? And I'm like, oh no, this, and then we're going to play this. So I always kind of found myself doing it. And then like in my early twenties, I was like, I always was fascinated. So my grandpa, he played a, a bunch of different instruments. One of them was the violin. So I was like, okay, I'm going to learn how to play the violin, right? So I actually took classes at this mariachi conservatory oh, excuse. with one of my aunts. Um, and baby girl, let me tell you. <laughs> Look, here go the AirPod, honey. Uh, I don't even know where it went. But, like, it just, it was, I really enjoyed it. It just wasn't, it just, me. we just didn't align at that time. It just didn't yeah. work, right? And and that was okay. I learned, like, the basis of it. I could play a little bit. The fingering was a lot. Because I was older. I was, like, I said, it was, like, my early 20s. It's not like my grandpa was, like, little, I'm going to show you. You know, I have, yeah. like. Um, cousins where their kids they taught them that way and so they have a, a bigger appreciation from young but of like the instruments and stuff but I just tried and I just it wasn't my thing and I was like and I don't even want to say it wasn't my thing because I always feel like I'm gonna circle back and I'm gonna get it Jesus I'm gonna get it. <laughs> um but yeah it was just kind of that like I always felt even when I was lost in the world trying to figure things out music was my root and like that was my anchor and it, one way or another, whether it was just listening to it, going to parties or like whatever, it was just like, this is what I need. This makes me feel good. Um, and I thought about DJing a lot years before I actually decided to just step into it. Um, but like I said, the music is just in literally everything from my mom cleaning Saturday mornings, playing music. <laughs> like you could, there was, like, it's, it's to the point where it was so weird if no music was playing. Yeah. Like, Why isn't there music playing? Like this is, you know, I'd go to yeah. like friends' houses and their, their families are just sitting around talking. I'm like, Why y'all not playing no music? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the music? <laughs> it was really just in everything. Um, like from my inception, I think <laughs> it's just everywhere. <laughs> so when it, so when did you, what was the la like the final straw the last straw that was like I'm about to do this I'm finally gonna do this or you know what made you decide to do it so um uh, it was in 2017 so it wasn't even that long ago um it was in 2017 I actually was going through like a really significant breakup mm -hmm. we were in a relationship for like eight nine years um and it, it wasn't like a hard feeling. It was just kind of like, we love each other. We care about each other, but 
it's just not working. We're going two different ways. You know, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. But it's a hard pill to swallow when someone's been a part of your life for that long and mm-hmm. you live with them and, you know, that whole thing. Um, and I remember I went to to visit um, some family in Atlanta um, for my birthday in December that of 2017. And then when I came back, I was just like, you know what? I want to do it. And my friend who actually lives in Atlanta, he and I, um, we were talking about it early in 2018 because he also um, had DJed in the past, but wanted to get back to it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then I started to like look up stuff like equipment and stuff. And then I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. (laughs) Like it was really that moment where it's like, I don't know. And so I was like, you know what? Let me see if there's a DJ school, right? It was really just like that. I was like, let me see if there's a DJ school. And then I found, I saw that like the Beat Junkies had a school and they had opened, I think it was in 2017. Um, so I was like, oh, easy call, right? I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, I looked into it and I signed up for their intro to DJing class. And thankfully, cause so I work at the Kaiser on sunset. Um, and so it was in there in Glendale. So I was like, Oh, I can just go after work. I could work, yeah. you know, just like, I was like, all right, it's easy. I got it. I got it. I was already planning it out, mapping it out. And yeah, so I took the intro class and I fell in love. It was like, mm. why did you wait so long? <laughs> right. One. But I also feel like it was just also the right time because yeah. I was at a, I was in a headspace where I could totally put my blinders on and just focus on the music and focus on the craft. And that's what I did. So I took the intro class. Then after that, they have a foundation class, which is a year um, that goes further into it. And then it goes into Serato and stuff. And um, I took that. Then after that, I took their structure class. It was just like, you know, I was like, okay, I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm here. And it honestly was probably the best decision that I've made as an adult, I would say. I think I'm I'm secure with that. I will say that. <laughs> That's probably the best decision for a lot of different reasons um, that I've made as an adult. I think it's changed me for the better. I've met mm-hmm. some amazing people. And it's literally something that I don't, I now I'm like, I don't see myself not doing it. Like mm. it kind of feels like, what was I doing before this? <laughs> like now, like I don't see myself not doing it, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was definitely one, uh, it was a blessing and it was one of the best decisions I made for sure. Amazing. It was yeah, right place, right time, right mindset. You yeah. needed that distraction, right? Especially after something like that. Um, for so many years, I was there when I was younger too. I remember that it was just kind of like, there was no hard feelings, but it's still rough. Yeah. That transition because you, that person's been in your life for such a long time. I get it. So it's great that you were able to, like you said, dive head first, all in to yeah. to music. It's something that you, it was always in you, but it was the time. It was the right time. So now, speaking of time, it is time for the questions and comments from the audience. Ooh. Okay, first one. Being that I'm also mixed, also Afro-Latino, growing up around different types of foods as a kid, which is your all-time favorite? And this is from my son, the Supernatural Bear, who was also Afro-Latino. So he wanted to find out what was, you know, he figured that you you probably grew up about, around a bunch of different foods from both sides of the family and probably wherever you grew up. And so he said he feels the same, but what is your f- all-time favorite from childhood? Oh, that's rough. Like, just one? <laughs> like, just one. one. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That is tough. If I have to, right? <laughs> yeah. Pick one. Um, I would say chilaquiles. What? Oh, he's gonna love that answer because he loves chilaquiles. Yeah. We like just had nacho quiles for dinner right now. <laughs> <laughs> like my mom is like La Salsa Queen. That was her that's her thing. Like she makes fire salsa. Like I grew up choking in my household every <laughs> And she was got the mano los chiles and all that, right? 
So, um, yeah, I think like, even now I feel so weird. Like when I'm getting ready to eat and I'm like, well, there's no salsa. Like, I feel like I can't eat. I'm like, I, I can't do anything with this. There's no salsa to go with. It. Uh, but yeah, I would say chilaquiles. Oh, he's going to love that. Okay. Next question. What does the Beat Junkies Institute of Sound mean to her? And how has it changed her life? And this is from Word to Your Mama, episode 28, guest Maricel Sasson, founder of Ladies of Sound. (laughs) Um, Honestly, going to the school was for sure the biggest blessing. Um, It's really cool to just one, learn from people that are so awesome and just legends in the game and masters at their craft. But also I think what was really, really inspiring to me was just to see how just regular and humble they are. Right. Like they literally, cause I, you know, I think when you see people like that growing up, you want to put them on a pedestal <clears throat> and like give them the supernatural kind of like, you know, <laughs> thing. like, Oh my God. But just literally the nicest, like my, so my instructors were Babel and Chalk. Um, nice. I mean, the ni- the nicest, just most humble, good people you will ever meet. I don't know how to say it. Like, <laughs> you know, and even when I'd be frustrated and then, oh, honey, I told you my patience, girl, I ain't got it. <laughs> so I'd be frustrated when we're learning something or a new technique and, you know, um, like, you know, and you got it, you got it, you know, and then, you know, just like the motivation and, and it was honestly... I just did. I honestly didn't know what to expect going into the school. Mm. But when I tell you, like, even like, say if I expected something that was like level 10, I got a thousand. Like it was, it was so crazy because it instantly felt like I got a new family Mm. from people that I met that I went to class with that I'm still really good friends with that are t- definitely friends turned family to again the instructors um CeeLo's at the school um Make it down CeeLo's man love me some CeeLo's his patience is the one patience I need honey because he is like he's so smooth and just chill like yeah man I don't think I've ever seen him upset in all the years that I've known him. I don't think I've ever seen him like riled up. Wired to even get to that <laughs> level. I don't even think it's in him to, to even be that way. The nicest person you will ever meet. Again, super nice. patient and just sat there, even when I was frustrated and sat there and spent some time with me. But yeah, it was literally like taking on a new family that I mm. didn't even know I needed, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, so I have this wonderful extended bonus family. It was literally, again, the best decision in my life. I will <laughs> never regret it. Um, if I could just rewind and do it all over again, I would. It was such a good time. Like, I miss it. I so <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Final question and comment from the audience. Her response was, yeah, she is so dope. What is her go-to song to get people on the dance floor? And this is from Word to Your Mama, episode 14, music veteran, DJ Mona Lisa. Ooh, okay. (laughs) Honestly, I feel like I always think because I grew up with like such a huge family dynamic where that was just the root of everything. I always think um like backyard boogie classics just hanging out right like what feels good so I feel like I always tend to go that route mm. um so depending on where I'm at like I'll throw on some Senia Cruz right and I feel like they'll <laughs> love that again because reggae and dance are such a big part like uh, 90s dance hall honey forget I forget about it look that is I got a playlist bad. dance hall reggae classics like right. that's all you need the worst def- day, it, you can't not move. It's like salsa too. like Exactly. So I think those are my go-tos. And then I would say if I'm going to like <clears throat> like venture off into the hip-hop realm, I feel like being from L.A., like you definitely got to go with like some OG funk classics or mm. even like I, I love the Bay. Like I, I always, I feel like in a past life, I was, I was born and raised in the Bay, honey. Same. Okay. Same. Yeah. All so my, a lot of my peoples are from the Bay. Too short, like yes. Look. yes. 
that's definitely yes. I would say that's that's usually where you'll see me playing around and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you with these. And even if you're fighting it, honey, even if you wanna fight me, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> Love it, love it, love it. Okay, now it's time for the not so rapid fire questions, the AKA slow as hell questions. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. First one, three words to describe yourself. <laughs> me <neither>? okay. <laughs> I would say adventurous. Okay. Goofy. <laughs> I am. And um, I would say optimistic. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Next one. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> the first thing, I'm going to just go with the first thing that came to my mind. Okay. The first memory, right? Um, I was at my grandma's house. And one of her sisters came to visit from D.C. Um, and I was, I don't know, I was a, like an adolescent, maybe 12 or 13, I don't know, something like that. And I, I must have been walking around, and I think I had my head down. Just, you know, walking around the house, you're not thinking about it. And she came up to me, and she took her hand, put it to my chin, and put my head up, and was like, you always keep your head up. No. She was like, you always keep your head up. You always walk proud and stand true and proud to yourself. And you always keep your head high and walk with that. No matter what you're going through, you keep oh. your head up and you feel good and you and you and you move that way. And I've always remembered that. Like I legit would probably want to cry right now. I'm not gonna I know you're cry. almost making me cry. Yeah, like and it cause I could just re I vividly see her doing that to me. And even then, I don't think I fully understood it at that moment, but as it's it stayed with me my whole life and i feel like as i evolved and got older i really really understood it and even when i felt down or even when i was in moments where i was just like okay i feel broken whatever you know yeah i always go back to that and i'm like for me what i always tell myself is like always remember who you are right yeah. remember who you are and i think that always brings it full circle for me that's beautiful i love that because it wasn't just words, it was actions. And even if you were too young to take it in, you heard it. It was the the seed was planted. And then later on, when you were older, you heard, you listened and you heard it, heard it, heard it, heard it. That's amazing. I love that. Okay. This one's going to be great. I love when I have my music peoples on. What is your go-to need to get hype song? Only one, because I know we have different ones for different occasions, but it's just the one, like the first one on top of your head. As soon as you said that, tell me when to go. That, <laughs> that's, the first thing he came, that's the first song he came to my heart. That, even with me and my, my girlfriends, we go out, don't let that come on. Like, like my daughter's mom, bro, we on the floor, we out there. <laughs> Every time I always say I'm gonna be 80 years old and let that song drop, honey. Wheelchair walker, seat, <laughs> wherever I'm at, honey. Oxygen look, look. tank, it's on. I, I'm here, right? I'm here. It, so I'm gonna say tell me when to go for sure. That's amazing. And as always, this is gonna be added to the word to your mama guest hype song playlist. I know I got some E-40 on there. I don't think it's that. I also have some Mac Drake because I have some Bay Area people on here. So I got a C. It might be on there already, but, you know, it, it's a great addition if it's not, for sure. Um, and as always, it's, it's a very eclectic mix. So I'll definitely have a link in the show notes to that. Final question. What will be your legacy? Oh. You did not come to play, honey, today. <laughs> Wow. Honestly, if where I stand today, if just I would say spreading love, spreading joy, just everywhere you go, everything you touch. Um, I try I really, really try to do that and be that person in in every in every space that I enter, mm. whether it's work, um, being a Nina, a Thea, a sister, um, a friend. I think just 
just being joyous and and bringing some good energy i think if you if if i'm going i feel like i want as soon as you think of me like she made me feel good and we had some laughs and we had a good time i feel like i i i'd say that right off the top right now i'd go with that i love that and, and and let me just just say this i don't know you i've talked to you because i was trying to get you for some some event but I'll say this again. I tweeted it. I fucking IG storied it. Like the vi- I, if I get the the vibe that you're putting out, the joy that you have on your face and you're dancing as you're spinning, I'm just like that must feel amazing in person. And I was like, it it was like some some it was one of the trash news times the past couple of weeks and I was just like man music always helps me it saves me and I saw you posted something you spun somewhere and I was like people people were filming you because they were like oh she's having such a great time and I was like you and spin your I don't know if you guys know each other probably small world but we haven't met yet once uh-huh but like you know and I was just like you guys have that same level of energy like I love her because she's having a good time so it's like you want to have a good time and I've seen her spin live and I was like one of these days I'm gonna see you spin live because I get so much joy from your videos uh, anyone you know filming you or whatever it's just like the there's no faking it you're not faking it if you are you're a fucking amazing actress you know what i'm saying i tried honey let me <laughs> say <laughs> it's like you feel like you you're playing it for the people but it's just you're playing it from your for yourself and you're passionate and you're so super joyful so the legacy that you're talking about i don't even know you like that and i feel like yes that's on point you spread love you spread joy I'm sure if, you know, especially if someone comes from out of town and they just happen to accidentally stumble upon like one of your gigs, that's going to be memorable. They're always going to, I feel like they're always going to remember you for what you play, but also how you were playing it. So thank you so much for saying yes to being on the show. I love showcasing whether mostly as people I know or people that are part of my tribe somehow, some way, and you bring me joy. So thank you so much. And I can't win it. It's about to be just, I'm going to tell you right now. I love music. I love dancing. I miss it so much, especially because I'm not in LA anymore. So the next time you spin and I'm there, watch out. Cause it's about to be on and popping because. Girl, <laughs> say less. Okay, say less. Don't let me see you. I'm, a, I'm already on 10. I'm going to be on 20. Cause I'm going to be like, yes, the moment is here. Okay. <laughs> I love it so much. Thank you so much. To let the people know, like, you know, how can they find you? I'm going to have it in the show notes, but if they're listening, they can, you know, take the mentals. Yes. So I am on Instagram primarily. I'm also on Twitter, but like I told y'all, I really know. <laughs> um, so my handle is Ilmeca. That's my DJ name. And that's I L L M E C A. Um, so yeah, you can definitely find me there. And I'm always posting videos and my next gigs and where I'm at. So, you know that's that's where you can find me for sure yeah thank you so much you're the best thank you for having me i truly appreciate it i had a great time this is great that's why to end the day i love it <laughs> and now introducing the supernatural bear corner supernatural bear Hello everyone, I am the SNB for the SNB Corner, and today we have two things. The first being a bit comedic, if you will. So, I asked uh, Miss Ilmeca um, as a question what her favorite food was. I was just curious, um, and I just heard right now that she replied, Bar- What was that? Chilequiles. I love chilequiles. They're so delicious. But only when they're done right. Only when they're done right. Anyway, co- comedy aside, um, I wanted to get to the main topic of this. Mr. Josh. Yes, not Uncle Joshua. Mr. Josh. I think he'll be on a future episode, but I don't know. Um... So, he made some epic comic books, and I read one for an episode and did a thoughts and analysis. And, um, 
Well, he drew an epic picture of Mama and I, but as animals. Um, and it was really cool, and I believe he's making a story about it. And, um, if you want to support him, the link will be in the show notes below. Um, but yeah, it looks super cool. I love it so much. And, you know, I kind of want that as a plushie. Tell the people, explain to the people what it is. Like, it's it's us in, in what form? It is us in his art style, but as animals. Um, I am a bear, and Mama is a wolf. Yeah. And it looks amazing. Like, yeah, uh, could you also... Uh, she will have the link to the picture as well in the show notes below. But, um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's really awesome. If you want to support it again in the show notes? Please support. And yeah, that's pretty much it. See you guys in the next episode of Words Your Mama. Shooby doos. <laughs> yeah. I never get it on right on time. I never do. Anyways, uh, yeah, that was episode 82. There you have it of Word to Your Mama with DJ Il Mecca. Was I lying or was I lying? Yeah, she's that positive. I had so much fun. I laughed. It was good timers. Make sure to follow her on all her socials. Make sure if you're following her on IG to to engage with her stories uh, because she'll have videos of people uh, that were at her DJ gigs and you'll understand the level of energy I'm talking about and that you want to be a part of. Like, I want my DJ to be having that much fun. It's like, you know, um, those that, are, that watch a lot of DJs and um, stuff like that, like boiler room type level stuff, you know, where the DJ's playing beats and everything, but they're also part of the party. Like, their physical energy that they're exuding contributes to the overall vibe. Like, recently... Uh, Kenny Beats, I talk about him a lot. He was at a boiler room somewhere in Europe and it was, ugh. I was like, man, I guess it's not a pandemic, but damn, that looks dope. <laughs> it was just like, okay, he's having a good time. The people are having a good time. That's what I'm talking about with DJ El Mecca, aka Angie Fuentes. Please go and support. Also, you know, all this and, you know, is not possible without what we've discussed and mentioned on many episodes on here, the Bee Junkie Institute of Sound. Okay, like we discussed. Legends in the game, masters of their craft. If you're going to learn how to do something and you have, if you live close by and you have the means, do it from the best. Why sell from mediocrity? So, yes, Bee Junkies Institute of Sound. Everything we discuss, as always, they're going to be links in the show notes. I want to say uh, the supernatural bear. I knew he would love the chilequiles things. He loves those, man. And he and yeah, he's right. It's about quality. It's not just any chilequiles. <laughs> you know, it has to be quality if they're done right. Amen to that, little man. Amen to that. Thank you for the support. As always, we, you know, there's different ways to support Word to Your Mama. You can email us and let us know, um, you know, how we're doing, who you want to talk to. If you have any questions or comments, we'll be make sure to, to read them at the next episode. You could donate directly, become a patron. You can buy us a whiskey via v Buy Me a Coffee. Uh, you can go to the store. We have amazing Enamel pins, one made by the Supernatural Bear. We have two created by me, illustrated by me. We have T-shirts and tank tops now. Please believe it. Please believe it. I'm my ancestor's vengeance and soy un milagro. Come on. Get with it. It's summertime. Pick pick your poison. Uh, you know, support. Also, I just, you know, we just recently, uh, maybe yesterday, today, I don't know what day it is, I had the, um, we have a monthly town hall meeting with the Latino Podcasters Network that we are a part of, and also our brother network, the Latino Pods. And man, there's some amazing things in the works. So I also always want to give a shout out to Rita and the entire Latina Podcasters Network crew. Uh, I appreciate it. The promos that you hear. Um, I, all the episodes are, 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 you know, we got them from them. They they are supporting us and taking care of us. So I really appreciate that. 
And also just to give you a rundown how it's been going for the past couple of months and we'll continue to do it is that, you know, once a month we'll have the nerd out. It's me and Lisa B. Jenkins, the whitest, blackest <laughs> Personally, you got to listen to her episode uh, to understand what that story is about. Um, Her name is Lisa Jenkins, but she's white. Um, And so that's once a month we talk about our favorite shows. It's a podcast that we had before, but now I brought it over to Word to Your Mama. So we have that once a month. So we continue to do it. And then where there's always going to be a relatives, me and my relative, Naisha, you know, uh, a Mexican and a black girl growing up two exes away from the border. We discuss our history, past traumas, black and brown unity. I mean, it's very therapeutic. Definitely check those out. And then we have special guests and the special guests continue to be someone from my amazing multicultural tribe, whether I know them or not. Because if I don't know them, like Ilmeca, I don't know her well, it's because she's contributed to me and my life somehow, some way in a positive, you know, in a positive manner. So look for that. So we'll have every month, once a month, we got the nerd out. Once a month, we got the um, relatives. And then depending on how the month goes, one to two, maybe sometimes depending on a longer month, three special guests. So make sure to reach out, let us know how we're doing, and thank you so much for supporting. And as always, we reap. Word to Your Mama is owned and produced by Ritzy P. Intro Beat, produced by Nico Beats. If you want to know more, you want to email us, you want to get the media kit, go head over to wordtoyourmama.com. Word to Your Mama is now part of the Latina Podcasters Network. And as always, Word to Your Mama is brought to you by ritzyperiwinkle.com.